Turn with me, please, to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 1. When he was come down, that is the Lord Jesus, from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. We just read about a man who had a terrible disease. It must have been terrible to have leprosy. Leprosy was an incurable disease. And if you had leprosy, you were defiled. You had to be separated from everyone else. And so it would lead to extreme loneliness. You had to shave your head and cover yourself. And if anybody came close to you, you would have to shout unclean 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 this was your life now you were defiled you were unclean you can only imagine uh, the sorrow that one would have if they had leprosy they would be separated from family and friends and they would have to be put outside of the camp by themselves a terrible terrible illness Let's turn to John chapter 8 now. John chapter 8, and verse 1. Jesus went on to the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him. And he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. When they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even on to the last. And Jesus was left alone. And the woman standing in the midst, when Jesus had lifted up himself, he saw none but the woman and said unto her, Woman, where are thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. We're going to read one more verse in John chapter 3, verse 17. <clears throat> John 3 and verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You know, that leper that day came across a man unlike any other person. You see, all other people would have had to get away from him. He was defiled. And had they come in contact with him, they would become defiled. But on that day, he met a man, a man who was different than any other man who had ever lived. And this man was the answer that this leper was looking for. You know, he cried to the Lord. It says he fell and said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. You see, he had a lot of faith in this man. He said, thou canst make me clean. He was confident that the Lord Jesus could cure him. But what he wasn't sure about is if the Lord would want to cure him. You see, he had been lonely. We don't know for how long. Nobody could come close to him. Nobody wanted to touch him. 
you know, some with low esteem, so low self-esteem could enter into that pain, being rejected, being despised, people not wanting them around. And this man knew what that was like. And so when he came across the Lord, he wasn't sure if the Lord would want to cure him. If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. What was the Lord's response? He says, I will. I want to make you clean. And then he touched him. And he said, be thou clean. Isn't it amazing that the Lord could have just said, be thou clean. And this leper, his leprosy would have gone immediately. But the Lord touched him. Something he must not have felt for years. But here was one who could touch him. And the leprosy departed from him immediately. What a touching story. But you know, this story is just a picture of something that you and I can enter into. And that is sin. You see, leprosy was a grave disease. It would spread through your body. It would spread to your fingers and nose. And your body parts would start falling off. It was a terrible illness. But it's just a little example of sin. And sin is something that every person is born with. Sin is something that we can all relate to. We can all speak about sin. And we're all on the same page. If, if we're born in Africa, in Asia, Europe, North America, South America, we can all relate. We were all born with this illness called sin. Boys and girls suffer from it. Adults suffer from it. Elderly people suffer from it. We're all on the same page. We're all on the same boat when it comes to this illness. Now, some of us don't know that we're sinners. We've all heard of people who were sick. And all of a sudden, one day, they didn't feel well. And they went to the doctor. And they found out that they only had a few weeks or months to live. You see, they were sick all along the way. But they didn't know it. And the problem the problem is that sometimes people don't know that they're sinners. And you see, they're on their way to hell. They're dying and they're suffering from sin, but they don't know it. And tonight, that's why we're here. It's first to let you know about your condition, your condition of sin. And the Bible teaches that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All, every single person who's ever lived all have sinned. It's a terrible disease. We can look at human history. We can go back 6,000 years. And we can see that there is something wrong with humanity. And despite all our advancements today, all our technology, all our knowledge, there is still something severely wrong. All you have to do is look, Google the statistics how many people die annually? How many people commit suicide annually? How many people suffer from diseases and illnesses and mental illnesses? And how many people are murdered every single year? How many people die from starvation every year? The world is in a terrible shape. And Satan loves to take our mind off our condition, off our illness. He loves to distract us, but we are lepers, we are sinners, and we need the Lord Jesus. We need his touch, and the wonderful thing is not only is he able, but he's willing. You see, some people don't think that they're sinners, they think they're good. And we read a little story in John about this woman who was caught doing something very bad. And the Pharisees brought her to the Lord Jesus and said, Master, we caught her in the very 
act. And there was no question about it, she was guilty. I wonder how you would have responded. I think I know how I would have responded. There was no doubt she was guilty. Perhaps she was a prostitute, I don't know. But, you know, there's enough of those people around us today. And we look down on them. But the Lord Jesus had a different perspective. The Lord Jesus wanted the Pharisees to know that there was absolutely no difference between them and her. That what she suffered from, they also suffered from. And so he began writing on the ground. And I wonder if he was writing all their sins. And then he looked at them and said, whichever one of you is without sin may cast the first stone. And not one of them could cast a stone. Not one of them was sinless. You see, the only one who could condemn her was the Lord Jesus. And he didn't. And that is the problem today, is that not only are we sinners, but we're not willing to admit it. When we go see a doctor and he tells us our condition, we need to accept it in order to be uh, healed, in order to start uh, taking medication and dealing with the issue at hand. But if we go to a doctor and he tells us that we have cancer or we have a problem and we don't believe him, then we are left to deal with the consequences of that illness. And the Bible is very clear about sin and its consequences. For the wages of sin is death. Death. Hell. We must pay, and we must answer for our actions and for our sins. And there is absolutely no way around that. But the wonderful news is that God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Would you like to know the Lord Jesus as your Savior? Would you like to know his precious touch? Would you like to spend all of eternity with him? Would you like to be healed and forgiven of your sins? Well, there is no one you can turn to besides the Lord Jesus. There is no other name. There is absolutely no other name given to us under heaven whereby we must be saved the lord jesus was the only man who can help that leper the lord jesus was the only one who can could, who could condemn that woman the lord jesus is the only one who can forgive you your sins and the wonderful thing again is that he's willing how do we know that he's willing? Well, he left the splendors of heaven, the most wonderful place, and he came into this wicked world. You know, as, as the years go on, and I learn more and more, one thing stands out to me, is that this world is a terrible place, that there is no lack of sin and evil in this world. And he left heaven to come into this world. And he became the least of the least. He was born in a manger, in a feeding trough. There was no room for him. And from the day he was born, they wanted to destroy him. They hated him from the day that he was born. Some, some of us might know what it's like to be rejected or hated. 
not a nice feeling. The Lord Jesus, from when he was a babe, was rejected. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. He was despised and rejected of men. And why would he come into that kind of atmosphere? He, he wasn't rich when he came into this world. He was poor. And some of us might know a little bit about what it's like to be poor. And it's not very nice either. But that's the life he came into. They had all sorts of accusations against him. And they hated him until they finally scourged him and nailed his hands and his feet to a cross. He was the song of the drunkard. And he had a spear put through his side and a crown of thorns hammered into his head. And that's the world that he came into. And so is there really any question whether or not he was willing, whether or not he is willing? He's willing. And he's able to save you from that terrible illness called sin that we all suffer from. And he is willing and he is able to save your soul and to prepare a place for you in heaven. You know, some people are cursed with the ability to hide their sinfulness, their imperfections. But then there's others who are blessed by failures, one failure after the other in this life, trials. And they are blessed because those are the people who look up. And those are the people who realize they need help. Those are the ones who know that they need a savior. And I wonder tonight, do you know that you need a savior? Have you been touched by your infirmity? Or do you think that everything is okay? I just wanna invite you tonight to look up and to look to the one who can save you from your sins. In the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who gave that leper hope, and the one who was able to forgive that woman caught in adultery, and the one who has saved countless people, and the one who waits for you tonight to come into his arms. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I heard someone say this once. Know the Lord now. You'll know him as your savior. But if you wait till after you die, you'll know him as your judge. And there is no question about the fact that we will have to answer for our sins. Everything we have ever done, everything that we have ever said, everything that we have ever looked at, everything that we have ever listened to, the good that we didn't do, we should have, we will be held accountable to him. But remember, I want to remind you again that that lady, she knew him as her savior because she, though she was caught in the very act, she came across the savior that day. Will you accept the Lord Jesus as your savior? I'll just leave you with those few thoughts. Thank you for listening and thank you for having me.
Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your Son, who is the sinner's hope. And we love him because he first loved us. We're grateful to have a message, a message of hope, a message of good news. And we're grateful that he ever came into this world out of love to save us. Father, we pray for the souls that have heard this message again tonight. We pray for the encouragement of the believers. We pray for those who don't know him yet. We commit them to you. We ask for your richest blessing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.